be talking about how to leverage Google Alerts for sales. Some of you have probably used this in the past a lot for news. We're not going to talk about using it for tracking news, but actually for everything else. So let's dive into this. One of the great um, tools that we can use within Google Alerts is for office moves. And so one of the one of the areas where Google Alerts is really powerful is that it's able to track changes. Because companies are really interested in being more visible via Google, they're putting more and more information out there that's available to us. One of the one of those sources would be LoopNet. Now LoopNet is the largest commercial real estate website. And so when they post new uh, office space that's becoming available or that um, is for rent or to buy, that's an indicator that whoever's in that building today will be leaving in the next three to six months because they're going to do that before the current tenant leaves in order to backfill that space. And so you can point Google to uh, the site LoopNet, and what you do is you do site colon loopnet.com forward slash listing with a capital L space, and then the address that you're looking to to pull the inf information for. And so Google, when it detects changes for any listing with that address, it's going to send you an email. Now, one of the tricks with Google Alerts is that it's not going to give you everything. And so if you were to leave off the address, you would get a few data points. But the more specific you get with Google Alerts, the better the data that's going to come back, if that makes sense. So here's an example of one uh, where there's an actual address. You could also use a city, a street name, a zip code, a state. But again, it needs to be fairly specific in order to get the information that you're looking for. And so the broader the search, the less information you're going to get. And so this will email you every time you see changes taking place within these um, pages that are referencing these address aspects. Now, once you, once you detect that, you can actually throw the address into tenantlist.org which will produce a good spreadsheet for you with all the information for contacts and tenants in the building. You could also run a background check on the companies uh, for free at upsellreport.com. Get the company's contacts, software, um, locations, business information, a pretty comprehensive overview of the company, but this is a great resource to kind of pull together all the information that you need to execute on that strategy. Next up, we can also look for new building construction. So rather than just looking for single tenants that are moving in and out of a building, we can also look for entire buildings that are going to be backfilling or adding a whole list of tenants. And so you can use the same URL, which is the site colon loopnet.com forward slash listing with the capital L. And then in parentheses, you're going to have new construction. And what that's going to do is every time uh, a new website within LoopNet has the phrase new construction, which indicates this building is going to be uh, built in the next year or so, you can then engage with the commercial real estate agents for that building in order to help supply the necessary technology and bandwidth needs. And here's another preview of that if you're looking at the webinar with us. Next up, we want to look for job growth. And so this one's a little bit more tricky. It takes a little bit more uh, research if you're using uh, in Sable, we do all this, these analytics for you. But if you're looking for job changes, so company expansions or rapid growth, you can keep track of that by going to site colon indeed.com and then in parentheses put the company name. And what this will do is it will keep you up to date on all of the new job postings that companies are actually putting out there. And so what this does is it helps you keep track of what types of jobs they're looking for. Maybe they're looking for a contact center rep. Maybe they're looking for someone to manage their data center. But also if you're looking at lots of job postings in areas that are new, this will help you kind of get an idea of where they're expanding, where they're investing, where they're growing which are good indicators that technology needs are going to grow and change with that. Next up, we also want to keep track of employment changes. And so some companies, the larger companies, you're going to see a lot more change than you would with smaller companies. And again, Google Alerts is going to limit what you see. So you want to be specific and focus on the right types of companies. And so adding company, again, parentheses after site colon linkedin.com forward slash in, this, what this will do is it will notify you, Google, when it detects changes 
across any LinkedIn profile that happens to have that company name in the profile. And so what this does is it helps keep you up to date on any changes related to that specific company, again, which is something that we're constantly looking for within the sales space. We can approach this from a, a different angle where we can track specific profiles. And so if we have a key contact, whether it's the IT manager, the contact center manager, but if we notice that there's a change, maybe they uh, moved on or maybe they've changed positions within the company, we can track that by looking at specific profiles. And so all you need to do is cite colon the, the actual public version of their LinkedIn profile. And this will, Google Alerts will actually notify you about those changes that are taking place. Now, sometimes the changes will not be related to their profile. Maybe they've updated a group that they're following within LinkedIn or added a comment. But in any case, it's going to notify you about changes which are relevant. And that's why we want to focus on the right types of contacts for this particular alert. Next up, we also want to look for job changes. You can add a company name to this URL, but the most important piece is, again, site colon linkedin.com forward slash in, and then in parentheses, the abbreviated version of the month, which is the first three letters, space, and then the current year. Now, you want to go back a month or two. If you do this month, it works as well. So if we're in December, you can do that. But a lot of folks... You're only going to see limited data. So you can look at October, you can look at November, you can look at December. But what this is going to do is going to show you all of the all of the profiles that have experienced change. Now, again, Google's not going to show you everything because they're smart enough to hide some of that information. But the more specific you are in the, re, in the request, so if you had a company name, maybe a city, maybe an industry, you'll be able to start to get better data that comes through. And again, here's, a, here's a, an example of what this looks like. Next up, another change that's important is software changes. We've talked about this in the past, but this is crucial because as people implement new softwares, there's the, the software world is where a lot of great deals come into play. So if someone's launching a new Office 365 or a new CRM, that's the perfect opportunity to, to engage with them on an SD-WAN application in order to optimize that cloud access or even an integration into their hosted voice platform and selling them a, a system or an integration that would actually allow them to do that. Also, it's a great segue into security. So if you're talking about a CRM or a new email system, talk to them about um, strengthening the security parameters around that and training their employees to avoid certain things. All of these changes are great segues into those three areas of sales. And so one of the ways we can detect software changes, and again, and Sable does this for you, but if you wanted to do this on your own, you could do site colon dnschecktool.com slash URL, and then just the website. You don't have to use parentheses because there's no spaces in websites, and so that's not necessary. But you want to make sure that there's a space in between URL, which is part of the uh, the search criteria in the website, and that way Google knows that is that is in a single um, parameter. But what this does is, if, if if Google detects DNS changes related to a specific company, and the reason why we're looking at DNS is because this is where a lot of the software criteria is built in, and so most companies, in order for you to for instance, all CRMs need to be registered with the DNS in order to send emails from the CRM. Um, there's a lot of other reasons why data points would show up in the CRM, but, but um, when the DNS changes, that means that software changes internally in the company. This isn't uh, ubiquitous across all of their applications, but a lot of the most important applications will be present within that DNS. And so here's an example of, uh, of DNS changes that we were detecting. Another way to approach this is to look for specific types of applications. And so you're going to get a lot of information, and it may be an uh, information overload if you're looking for just any changes across DNS for a specific website. And again, we want to make sure that it's specific because if we're too general, Google may not give us anything back. But we can look for specific applications across all domains. And this is probably the one that's more relevant to you because not all applications are created equal. And so if we're looking at applications like a CRM 
or like a security type of application or disaster recovery type of application. If we know what codes to look for within the DNS that represent those applications and then use this to, to ask Google to notify us about companies who have changes related to this application, this would be a great way to do that. And so in this example, we're looking for companies who are adding Office 365 to their DNS records, which is a good indicator that a lot of things go with Office 365. So it's a great conversation to have with them. And again, we can also add a website here as a secondary criteria in order to narrow this even further to make sure that we're following the correct uh, domains. But again, this is designed to help you keep track of those changes. Another great way to look at um, <clears throat> changes are actually specific jobs. We talked a little bit about jobs in the very beginning. But this one is a little bit different because sometimes most of us in this in this business are outsourcing something for that company. So whether it's <clears throat> searching for technology consulting or for trying to provide services that would essentially replace a job. And so sometimes it's helpful to, to know what types of jobs companies are looking for. So in this instance, you could look for companies that are looking for anybody that has experience with VPN. So VPN is a technology that shouldn't necessarily be provided in-house, and there's a lot of other technologies that could do a much better job of that. But if anybody was looking for NPLS or VPN or data center manager, a lot of those would be a good indicator that this, co this company <clears throat> may need to rethink their strategy. And so you can look for jobs related to uh, technologies and products that you essentially outsource for them and simplify for them. So you can look for like IT security manager, HIPAA compliancy manager, a lot of different jobs. But essentially what this does is it helps you keep track of, track of needs that companies have that you could potentially outsource for them. Another great way to look at stuff is through venture capital. This is when companies, again, were looking at changes. And venture, venture capital will definitely indicate a big change. So this one we get early on in the process. If we go to sitecrunchbase.com forward slash funding underscore round, again, this is a little bit general, so it's not going to give you everything, but it is going to give you some data points that you could run with. And so when you set this up, it's going to notify you about changes related to companies who are receiving funding, which is always very helpful because they have money to spend. Another one that I like to look at is security breaches. There's a lot of different ways that you can phrase this, but all you're going to do is something uh, along these lines and a few variations of it, but you're going to do something like was recently hacked in quotation marks. And what this does is it's going to pull any news articles that highlight companies that have been hacked or compromised. And so this is, again, a great opportunity to discuss or engage with someone regarding IT security. And again, you can change the phrasing a little bit, but this is the one that I found that's most effective. But luckily, Google Alerts will allow you to have multiple phrases to look for. We can also look for disaster recovery options, and this isn't necessarily just disaster recovery because when someone's building is affected by a fire or a flood, typically they're going to use that insurance money to purchase new equipment and, and, and technology to replace it. They're probably going to be moving offices because of, the, of what happened, and so they're going to need new bandwidth. But disaster recovery is probably going to be top of mind after an, an event like this. And so, again, just like the last uh, phrase, there's lots of different ways to configure this, but this is probably one of the better um, but you can do a Google alert that highlights news articles for anybody that has office building fire. So it'll, again, show you which buildings have been affected. You can plug the address into tenantlist.org, pull all the tenants, and start reaching out to folks to see how you can do to help them transition and acquire new technology that hopefully will get them up and running rather quickly. There's another one, which is office building flood, very similar. There's other variations that you can look at. Related to this, again, you can play around with it, see what works, but these are the phrases that I found most effective for this type of alert. You can also look for news articles, and this is similar to what we talked about in the beginning with LoopNet, but sometimes this is, uh, LoopNet doesn't, LoopNet's more for existing buildings. This is for companies who are essentially announcing that they're going to be investing in a new building somewhere. 
And this one, there's lots of different variations. This is the most effective one I found, but you can look for articles where it says announces new building. Um, there's other ways to look at that, but again, if you want to keep track of companies who are building and expanding um, because they have a constant need for new technology. Another one that I like to work with is the economic development uh, programs. We've talked about this in the past with enterprise sales, um, but this is a little bit different from that last discussion. So every state will have what we call an economic development group where they're trying to attract and bring new companies to their market. And so what they do is they'll, they'll make announcements about big wins that they've had related to companies that are going to be moving and transitioning into their space. And so if you find the website that lists the news articles or announcements for these new developments, you can point Google Alerts to that site to notify you about any changes that are taking place. And so this, um, this particular one looking at Utah, this is, if you're looking at the screen, you can see the actual URL of the announcement website. But what this is going to do is it's going to keep, give you updates on different companies that are going to be making major transitions to a different state, which is, again, is a great opportunity to look for those types of events and opportunities to essentially sell new technology. So that's everything for today. Hopefully